Hello and welcome to another of the eBiology Teacher Podcasts. I'm Mr. Doc and today we are looking specifically at the urogenital system. Now that's a that's a pretty big broad topic. What we're actually going to be doing is three separate system dissections that are sort of interrelated. We're going to be doing the urinary system first and then we're going to be doing um, the male reproductive system and then the female reproductive system. And what I think we'll do best is to just do an overview, the urogenital male, urogenital female. That way not only do we get to see the urinary system twice, uh, both the male and female, because there's almost identical, very few differences, but we also get to see um, how they integrate with the, uh, the reproductive organs. So let's go ahead and start with our friend, little fetus. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Now, you will discover very quickly that little fetus is uh, not going to be sufficient today for our dissection because he is only uh, holding uh, half of what we need to do. So he's our, he's our male specimen, and then we have a female specimen uh, waiting in the wings uh, to take his place. All right? So, uh, of course, if we take a broader view of the pig, we take a look, and of course, this is something that we should be familiar with. We've got the thoracic cavity, the abdominal cavity, and we're going to be concentrating basically in the lower half of the abdominal cavity. All right? So just to, just to give you some perspective, this, of course, is the small intestine, the large intestine is over here, and that's the liver and so forth. So if we go ahead and we zoom in to the lower area, I've already done the dissection, so we're really just going to be identifying. Um, if I look here to find the kidneys, I'm going to have to lift because they are very, very dorsal. They're very, very close to the back. All right. So if I lift the small intestines here, you'll find that this large bean-shaped structure that I'm pointing at is the kidney. Now, in its natural state, before I dissected it, it was actually covered with a very, very thick membrane um, because it's sort of outside of that abdominal cavity. But what I've done is removed all that, and I've also isolated the different vessels the innervator go into the kidney. If you look here, there are three distinct entry points uh, into the kidney. The long, sort of thin one that's going down, it's kind of oddly, I guess it's not really thin, comparatively speaking. We have this large tube-like structure going all the way down. Okay, that's the ureter, and the way we know that is because it's going right here into the urinary bladder, which we've identified in previous dissections. The next thing we want to look at are the other two. Uh, we have this sort of muscular round structure, and then we have this sort of flat structure. Now, if we kind of eke away at this tissue, we start to notice that the large flat structure attaches to even larger flat structure, okay? That would make that the renal vein. And this large vein going all the way up, kind of uh, right along the median line, is in fact the vena cava. Okay, so we've got the large inferior vena cava and, of course, the renal vein that's running right into that. That makes the other blood vessel, by default, the renal artery. And if we were to dissect and kind of move all this stuff over, we would be able to find the uh, aorta, and we would note that the aorta and the renal artery also attach because that's where the blood uh, is, is coming. Actually, it branches off, not technically. But anyway, that's, that's, we know it's an artery. We know it's coming to the kidney. And we also know that the flat one, and remember we talked about venial structure, that's real flat, uh, real flimsy. And, of course, it attaches to the vena cava. So to review, kidney, renal vein to the, uh, the inferior vena cava, renal artery, ureter to the bladder. Now these two large structures that run sort of uh, parallel to the urinary bladder, that's going to be the umbilical artery. All right, and of course what we've already identified as the umbilical vein. So umbilical artery, umbilical vein. Now uh, we're going to start getting into some very specific male structures. So to do that we're going to move this, um, this uh, peninsula, the, the umbilical peninsula, out of our way. And what I've done is I've actually split the hip line. Now, the testes are actually going to be forward the hip. They're going to be more ventral. And I've actually isolated those here and here. Okay, so they're both right there. Uh, this one has a little more structure, and uh, a little more visible structure, so that's the one we're going to concentrate on. But I've also separated the hip bone. All right, so that's the hip bone there. This structure here is the testis, and then this uh, paler structure here is the epididymis. 
uh, semen will travel, or well, technically sperm at this point, will travel through the vas deferens, and then will uh, go and meet the urethra here at the base of the bladder. Okay. Now uh, the seminal vesicles are located here. All right, and that's where the fluid medium of semen will be added. So then it will be semen proper, and then the urethra continues and we reach the prostate gland and then we go into this large white structure here which is actually the penis and the penis runs very ventral to that umbilical peninsula and if we follow it all the way up we will notice that it ends right here at this opening which we identified as the urogenital opening all right now during sexual reproduction the penis would emerge from the urogenital opening uh, allowing sexual intercourse to occur between uh, the male and the female. Now, this is also where urine would emerge, uh, but the penis does not emerge during urination. Urina uh, urine would simply uh, proceed out of that um, out of that opening. All right. So to go ahead and quickly review, we've got the kidney, the uh, sorry, let's bring it down, kidney, the renal artery or excuse me, renal vein, renal artery, this is the vena cava, and of course the renal vein is attaching to the vena cava. We have the ureter, the ureter is attached to the umbilical, or the umbilical peninsula, this is actually the urinary bladder. The urinary bladder is right here, so we've got the ureter leading to the urinary bladder. Um, and then the bladder, of course, leads to the urethra, and the urethra out the penis where urine would follow. So we'd start, uh, blood would come in through the artery, it would be filtered through the kidney, the filtered blood would go back through the renal vein into the vena cava where it would go back to the heart to be recirculated. The waste would come down the ureter into the urinary bladder and would be expelled out the urethra. Now, a review of the uh, reproductive structures. We have the testis, the epididymis, the vas deferens, seminal vesicles are located here, prostate, the bulbourethral gland is actually located right here, the penis goes this direction. It's this white tube structure and of course urine would emerge out the urogenital opening there. All right. Uh, we'll review that one more time with respect to a diagram, but let's get into the female structures just so that we all are on the same page. All right. Uh, somebody give me a nice name for a female pig. Um, Jennifer. Bessie. No. That's my sister. Uh, <laughs> I've heard Jennifer. I Kind of weird. Sounds like somebody's sister's name. Uh, anyway, uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the female uh, urogenital system. And just to give us some perspective, all right, we've got here, we're going to move. And by the way, remember, kidneys are bilateral. There's one on each side. So just for fun, let's go to this other one over here. Yay. All right, so now we're dealing with the left kidney. Um, yes, th there's a color difference, but that's okay. You can see that some of the membrane on this one is still attached. So you can kind of see that membrane that holds the kidney in place. All right, we're just going to move that out of the way so we get a nice view of it. And then if we start to eke away at that tissue right around the entry point here, being very careful trying not to hurt the kidney itself, we can start to see very clearly the ureter, okay? And then we start to see uh, the veins and arteries that innervate the, uh, that innervate the kidney. Okay, so there we go. We've got the kidney, we've got the urinary artery, urinary vein, and of course the ureter. The ureter is going to travel downward, okay, and yes, I'm moving some structures out of the way so we can see it, and it's going to travel right down to the bladder. There it is, okay? Now, in the female, there are some different structures. Notice that we have done the same cut. Notice the absence of testicles. That would be a good thing if we're looking at a female here. But we also notice the presence of this structure here. And I'm going to zoom in just a little bit to get a, 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 a more clearer view, a clearer view, not more clear view. Here we have an ovary. This would be what we would call a fallopian tube, commonly referred to as the horns of the uterus in the fetal pig. Again, the ovary on the left side, the horns of the uterus, the fallopian tubes. So that would make this sac-like structure right here in the center course the uterus okay now the uterus goes um, just dorsal to that but we know the urinary bladder continues and if we open this up a little bit we can start to see that the bladder and the urethra 
run. There we go, start to see it separate there. So we've got the urethra here, and that's going to run down, and it will emerge out of the, um, the uh, urogenital opening. Now remember, the urogenital opening, by the way, is um, located here near the urogenital papilla. And also keep in mind that the vaginal opening and uh, the, the urethral opening are two separate locations. Okay, they're two, two separate uh, exit points, uh, so to speak. Now, so let's go ahead and review the female anatomy one more time. Of course, we've got the kidney, the renal arteries and veins, the ureter leading to the bladder, the bladder leading to the urethra. Urethra is where urine exits. Um, for the reproductive structures, we have the ovaries, the fallopian tubes, or the horns of the uterus, uh, and then, of course, the uterus itself right here. And of course, just to give you some perspective, this large structure here is the uh, last part of the large intestine, and of course, this part here would be known as the rectum. So that gives you some perspective on that. So why don't we go ahead and put up uh, a, a common diagram that you might see with female reproduction uh, in the fetal pig and see if we can identify some structures, all right? Uh, you'll note, by the way, that uh, even though in the, the female we haven't really dissected it well, let's see if we can get at it real quick, um, the vena cava is actually in this specimen very visible. It's that darker structure. So this is the vena cava, right? And of course that would be the, oh, I'm all completely off the screen and didn't even know, why didn't you tell me? All right, uh, we've got the uh, vena cava here and of course that would be the uh, renal vein attaching to the vena cava. We've got the renal arteries here and if we continue to dissect, we have the ureter. So in our diagram here, we've got the vena cava, which is there. That would make this structure here in the lower part that would be your renal vein, so the vena cava renal vein. And then of course this structure here would be your renal artery, and this structure here going all the way down, that's gonna be your ureter. We have an ovary here, and we have the horn of the uterus here, and of course this whole structure here is the actual uterus. This structure here would be the urinary bladder, and the uh, umbilical arteries going uh, lateral to that. All right, so there are the structures of the female. Let's bring little fetus back here. Somebody take Jen, uh, Jennifer for me. Yes. Yes, thank you. My special lab assistant, Matt Mayer. Thank you very much. <laughs> all you get is a hand. That's all you get. All right, now for the uh, male reproductive structures and, of course, the urogenital structures, let's go ahead and take a look here. All right. <laughs> He's really enjoying his moment of fame, by the way. He's <laughs> like, millions of people on the internet are going to see this. All right, here we go. Uh, <laughs> all right, we've got the kidney. We've got the renal vein going to the vena cava. We've got the renal artery coming in here, and we've got the ureter. So if we take a look at our diagram, of course, this is the kidney. This is the vena cava. This is the vein leading to the vena cava, the renal vein. There's the renal artery just below that, okay? And that's the ureter going down to the bladder, the bladder, that long structure there, paralleled by the umbilical arteries, all right? Now, if we look further, um, and by the way, if we look here, this one's not quite as visible. It looks like it's very much dehydrated. Um, this structure here is the large intestine. It's not near as graphic as the, as the female, but, um, you notice that this is the rectum here. All right, we've got the testis, which is located here, the epididymis, the vas deferens going to the urethra. The urethra leads back here to the penis, the penis to the urogenital opening, which is off the screen right here, urogenital opening there. And by the way, just a quick note, um, we really can't see the urogenital opening I haven't put, the, because I haven't put the mail, why didn't anybody tell me these things? Nobody's telling me that this is what we're seeing. Okay, um, <clears throat> so we have the testis, which uh, if we look at this diagram, it's, it's pretty close. We have the testis, uh, the epididymis, the vas deferens here, the penis is here, and of course, the urogenital opening is here. 
One quick note uh, to, to determine the gender of the pig is actually quite simple. Remember that the urogenital opening of the male pig is right here, right below the umbilical cord. The urogenital opening in the female was all the way back uh, just, uh, just ventral to the anus. So that's very easy to tell the difference uh, if you know what you're looking for. Um, last uh, little bit of notes here. The urinary systems work very similarly even though anatomically they have sort of different reference points. So just keep that in mind. Um, you don't have to really learn a separate system for the urinary system for male and female, uh, but it does uh, help to understand the reproductive structures in context with the urinary structures because they are so intimately related. Uh, I hope this has helped you understand the reproductive structures of the fetal pig. Uh, and remember that we have one more to go, and that would be the nervous system. Um, so we'll see you online when we get there. Have a great, wonderful, and amazing day.